Do you remember the announcement of HPE Electra and Data Services Cloud Console? That was a big one, but you ain't seen nothing yet. Today's announcement is groundbreaking. I actually think it might be a storage industry shaping announcement. Let me tell you all about it. Hello, my name is Markus Leinonen, and this is where we discuss everything about enterprise technologies from bits and bytes to latest storage news. If you're into that kind of stuff, remember to subscribe. For all you impatient ones, here's a quick synopsis. Today, HPE announced a completely new storage platform called HPE Electra Storage MP. One storage architecture that scales from entry-level to mission-critical environments. No more choosing between storage lines and families. Not only that, but you can run virtually any storage protocol on it. Block, file, object, you name it. Depending only on what operating system it is running. HPE Allegro Storage MP has the potential to eventually replace most HPE storage products, like Treepar, Nimble Storage, Primera, Aletra, even hyperconvergent solutions. This is the biggest step towards HPE truly becoming an on-prem AWS since the introduction of GreenLake itself. Combining all that with the renewed HPE GreenLake for backup and recovery and the new Zerto as a service called HPE GreenLake for disaster recovery, the data services side of HPE GreenLake looks pretty complete to me. HPE's naming convention keeps getting trickier though, but what else is new? <laughs> For the rest of you who want to know more, hold tight. Let's start with the HPE Electra Storage MP platform. So far, HPE has been retrofitting their existing storage hardware, like Nimble Storage, Primera and Electra, into the new and shiny GreenLake concept. Those traditional storage arrays have not been specifically tailored to run the cloud. They work to a certain extent, but their capabilities to run modern cloud environments have a glass ceiling. HPE Electra Storage MP, on the other hand, is designed from ground up to support virtually any cloud storage environment, whatever protocol, whatever performance, whatever feature set, and whatever capacity. It really is that cool. Now, there's actually not that much to talk about the hardware itself, since it's really simple. The basic building block is a 2U chassis with commodity hardware like AMD processors, DDR memory and PCIe slots, all the ingredients of a reliant server. It even has an ILO chip. The front of a chassis houses up to 24 NVMe drives. And that's really that. If you would like to know more about the hardware, please add your question down below in the comments section and I will find the answer for you. Where things get really interesting is in the software that defines the persona of the system. Let's start with Block. So HPE has created a new Block storage operating system based on 3PAR, Primera and Electra operating systems. But it is obviously tweaked and improved to support the future of HPE GreenLake. They call this new operating system HPE GreenLake for Block Storage OS. Now, earlier on, I mentioned the basic building block, the 2U chassis. That building block comes in different variations. If there's only a lot of CPUs and GreenLake for block storage OS installed, you'll have a compute node. If on the other hand, the chassis is populated with tons of storage capacity only, you'll get a capacity node or JBOF. Finally, if the chassis is populated with CPUs and storage capacity, and it runs GreenLake for block storage OS, you'll have a Compute Plus Capacity node. Then you can mix and match. Start with, say, Compute and Capacity node. Later, add more Compute Power, add a Capacity node, maybe add another one, and then some more powerful CPUs, and so forth. By the way, scaling happens online, without skipping a beat. Later on, a switched solution will be available. This is what unlocks the full true scalability potential of HPE GreenLake for block storage by allowing to scale out to more than two compute nodes in a single system, virtually to any number of compute nodes. There is no technical limitation. 
Management is through the familiar Data Services Cloud Console as we are already used with the OG HPE Aletra. This is the new HPE GreenLake for block storage. But hold on, hasn't there already been HPE GreenLake for block storage? Didn't they introduce it almost a year ago at HPE Discover 2022? Good point, they did. <laughs> and this might seem like the same service, which it fundamentally indeed is. However, if you take a closer look, first there's the new CapEx model. So now you can buy the hardware for yourself and still use it in the same cloud way through the DSCC. By the way, only CapEx will be available at launch, OPEX will follow. Secondly, unlike with the OG GreenLake for block storage, you are no longer limited with the capabilities of a certain HPE Aletra line. You can rest assured that your storage scales with your needs without having to swap the underlying hardware to another. So yes, it is the same, but improved and future-proofed under the hood. So that was the block storage persona. HPE also announced HPE GreenLake for file storage. Again, it is running on the exact same hardware platform, HPE Aletra Storage MP. The only difference is that now HPE Aletra Storage MP is running VAST data operating system. Though the operating system is a modified version of VAST OS, so HPE calls it HPE GreenLake for file storage OS. Yes, you heard me right, VAST. It caught me off guard as well, since I don't remember any joint ventures between HPE and VAST in the past. But I'm not complaining. From what I know, VAST is extremely efficient in running especially large file systems. HPE GreenLake for file storage is also managed through, of course, DSCC. No doubt the star of the show for me was Aletra Storage MP platform, hands down. It defines how HPE will do storage in the future. To me, this announcement is first and foremost a beginning of a new era in HPE storage. The imaginable potential is limitless. Remember, HPE Aletra Storage MP is just Commodity x86 hardware that can run anything. What it runs and how is defined by software and software only. So HPE starts with block and file storage, but what comes next can be anything from object to data protection to archiving to, heck, why not run DHEI, SimpliVity or Nutanix on it, huh? Okay, to, to keep things real, not everything will be available immediately, of course, not even close. HPE has to start from somewhere and that's HPE GreenLake for block storage and HPE GreenLake for file storage. GreenLake for block storage starts from 8 core and 16 core compute plus capacity nodes only. This will be ideal replacement for mid-range arrays like 3 par 7000 and 8000. GreenLake for file storage capacities start from a whopping 250 terabytes with the real bang for the buck starting from around 1 petabyte or so. So uh, yeah, <laughs> for that reason, at launch, HPE is targeting only huge installations in the field of life sciences and financial services. Thinking about the capabilities of HPE Aletra Storage MP, the original HPE Aletra might have just been the last storage array HPE introduces. I mean, ever. The stories of MSA and XP will undoubtedly continue far into the future, but everything else in between will surely be converged to utilize HPE Aletra Storage MP platform eventually. I mean, why wouldn't they? While secondary storage and disaster recovery might not appear as sexy as the ultra sexy Aletra MP, they are integral parts of a holistic data service cloud experience. Imagine yourself first provisioning some block storage from DSCC, then when you have your volume up and running, what could be cooler than to set up data protection and recovery for that new volume immediately from the same user interface? I think nothing. <laughs> That's where HPE GreenLake for backup and recovery and HPE GreenLake for disaster recovery come to the picture. With this announcement, HPE GreenLake for backup and recovery adds the capability to protect all VMware virtual machines. 
So far, protection has been limited to VMs running on HPE Electra, HPE Primera or HPE Nimble Storage G5 only. From now on, you can protect all VMware VMs, regardless of which storage system they are running on, HPE or non-HPE. Another new feature is protection of AWS resources in addition to on-prem VMs. Lastly, HPE announced GreenLake for disaster recovery, which is basically Zerto as a service. About one and a half years after the acquisition of Zerto, it is great to see HPE adding this option too to GreenLake. Now, before I leave you, I was prepared to give you just a little tiny rant about HPE's naming conventions and how confusing it is to keep up with what GreenLake actually is today. Is it still more like leasing or is it already a real cloud? If it is a cloud, what's the deal with CapEx? Are we calling that cloud too now? Is Aletra part of GreenLake too, since it is managed with DSCC? And what's with the GreenLake operating systems? But I won't do any of that. The most interesting thing to me, as always, is the bigger picture and where HPE is taking GreenLake. When I first heard about HPE GreenLake quite a few years ago, I started to keep my fingers crossed for HPE to steer the GreenLake the on-prem AWS direction. Ever since I have been following the GreenLake progress with that in mind, and so far, pretty much all the announcements have systematically taken HPE GreenLake step by step towards that, including and especially today's announcement. It beautifully continues HPE GreenLake narrative, simplifying the storage infrastructure to support all imaginable cloud storage needs at any scale. Now, if you ask me, this is pretty cool stuff. But what do you think of this HPE's new approach to storage? Do you have some questions? Shoot a comment down below. With that, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, hit that like button. And if you want me to make more of these, subscribe. See you with the next one.